Hey everybody, welcome back. We are now ready to start the next video in the series. This is the sixth file. I think it's the fourth video. I'm not 100% sure there because I'm not doing a complete playthrough. Like I'm not going to show you every little move because it would be lots of hours of stuff. But I do want to, uh, I'm already on the 6 p.m., just about to the German 6 p.m. turn. I got to admit, I got sucked into this. I haven't done a lot of videos because I was having so much fun with uh, reading the books on Omaha and uh, and D-Day and looking at the maps and just all that cool stuff. So I've, I've really been having a good time. So I'm actually uh, just about to the uh, German... Uh, 6 p.m. turn, so I got dudes pouring in off some of the beaches, and we'll we'll get caught up with that. I'm going to try to do a few more videos to get caught up with that so I don't get too far ahead, um, but boy, I, I'm having a good time. In fact, I'll be honest with you, um, I'll probably have to probably uh, show detail in a different video because the other day I was so locked into playing, I, I realized, oh, I'm not putting any notes in here, really. I'm just doing all my stats and everything on my own, so... That would be a little hard to go back and try to figure out, but that's fine. I got we'll have plenty of footage for how to do a combat and how to do a fire support mission and how to do naval barrages and um I played around with uh doing some interdiction on the ground units and and uh bringing in air units and things like that. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh just reminder this is not a a how to video as far as tactics. I'm just moving counters around and having fun. I don't have a super duper big strategy. Um, I've forgot to do a few things. I'm sure I've forgotten a few rules. So if you see any, let me know. But I just mean I haven't moved certain units that I probably should have. And I'm kind of treating that as a fog of war for me on my own. So when I mess up like that, uh, it, it, uh, I'm not like if I was playing somebody else and they're like, Oh, I forgot to move this guy during the road movement. We're doing non road movement. I'd be like, yeah, I don't care. Go ahead and move him. But, uh, for myself, I'm not doing that. I'm penalizing myself. Uh, I did have some comments that it's kind of hard to see stuff. So I'm going to try zooming in at this level when we have anything that's worth going over, but I'm going to mostly stay at this level because it's, it's a little more manageable on what you can see. Let's try to push this up just a hair more maximize our room so let's go ahead and get started this is the uh, allied first allied combat phase so we've been dropping air units we've been trying to regroup and consolidate we've been moving around and now we're ready to strike out and attack some units so without further ado let's go ahead and uh, go through it the allied player may conduct attacks using any non-fog war units that are adjacent to enemy units Fargo War units may not participate in the attack, however, they do defend normally. So you can't attack with these unrevealed paratroopers. A German occupied hex can be attacked from one friendly occupied hex only. So you you're not allowed to do prepared assaults. And by definition, you can't attack from more than one hex. A tactical assault is always one hex, but you can't even put one hex in a prepared assault right now. So it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. Now, the combat, if I remember right, because like I said, I'm already into the regular game. I think it's a little bit different with this. So we'll see. Here is the combat procedure. So we'll go over that. 41.5.1. Uh, so let's kind of go through that here. 41.5.1. Do, 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 do. I didn't put all that in there because it's going to be a lot. What am I? Oh, I got to go. I'm in the amphibious. Okay, so 41.5.1. All right, so ground combat during the airborne stage is handled different than normal combat. It's the same for both the German and the Allied steps, uh, side. So here's the steps. So step one, each side will total up its attack and defense strength. Current combat strength for the unit is determined as outlined in Goss 13, with the following exceptions. So Fog of War units have a defensive strength of 1. Allied in-battery airborne artillery units use their barrage strength as their attack strength and their normal defensive strength when defending. Out-of-battery artillery units may not attack and defend with their normal defensive strength. Armored fighting ve vehicles, units double their combat strength, both attack and defense, if stacked with any type of infantry unit, and that stack is located in a clear terrain hex. The hex may contain a location or a village, so the, the little clear dot or the black dot. Uh, step two, each side selects a lead PR unit. 
at one half rounded up of the unit's PR to the attacker or defense strength. The attacker uses his attack PR, the defender his defense. Fog of War units have a defensive PR of six. Add the apical modifiers to the above total. I'm not going to read all those, but there's going to basically be terrain modifiers. Uh, and if there's a leader, uh, then each side will roll a D10. And you add those results to the total. And then you apply the results as in four, uh, 41.5.2, which is right after that. So it's, it's, it's a little bit different. I think it's kind of fascinating. I don't mind it being a little bit different because it is a different part of the game with the Airborne. Uh, so you compare the two totals, the side with the higher totals, the winner, you subtract the lower from the higher. If the di difference is zero, then there's no effect. So if they're tied, if the defense is greater than zero, but less than the loser's PR, then they got to retreat. So if you have a defensive PR of five and you're the defender and you lose and the die roll is a nine to seven, that's a difference of two. So you're just going to retreat. If the difference is equal to or greater than the loser's PR, the loser retreats one hex and loses a step. Ex except for strong point artillery, all in battery artillery units that are forced to retreat are eliminated. Okay. If the attacker was the winning side, participating units may advance into the hex. So we'll go ahead and go through that with all that stuff understood. You can go back and, and listen to that if you need to. I like to use um, the way Vassal works is if you move a unit, the screen, you can set it up so it'll jump to that unit. Unfortunately, it jumps after the unit moves its first hex. You can usually find out which one it is because of a little outline. But if you're playing on a big map, that's difficult. So I like to use these little spades as kind of like a little pointer. So as I move the spade, the screen will move with it. And then I'm not caught off guard by what's going on. All right. So easy company. Oh, we got easy company here. So let's kind of highlight over that. I'm going to zoom in for this part just because I've had some requests. It's a little bit blurry looking to me. So I don't know if that's old age and I need glasses or what. Uh, and it doesn't look like when you hover over it, it's still the other side. So let's go ahead and let's do this. So we got right there, we got easy company, second battalion of the 502nd. Uh, and we have the 377th artillery. It's got some 75 millimeter guns on it. And I'm guessing they're going to attack the 795 Oss battalion. Cause that's the only buddy touching them. So I'll just put these back down. Uh, the allies have three strength points. Half their PR is nine divided by two. You round up, so 4.5 to five. So they have eight for the attacker. The 795 Oss company, and for those of you who don't know, and, and I, you know, not not trying to sound like a know-it-all, but just I like to share what I've been learning. I learned that Oss battalions, that's for the East Front. Those are troops that have been brought from the East Front that were, you know, captured or or from countries that they conquered, and they put in these little, uh, what they call rear echelon units that weren't very good. So they don't have a great quality to them. But the 795th Ost Company has a defensive strength point of two. So remember, that's the second number right there. And its defensive PR for a generic company is uh, five. So you divide that by two, and you get three. So it's a total of five. So now we have... Uh, Oh, yeah, and so none of the Fog of War units can attack. They can only defend. Germans are going to get a plus for the hedgerow as well. So now it's 8 to 6, and uh, we'll give it a shot as the attacker. When I do this, if I forget to tell you, I always roll the attacker first. I always show stats for the attacker first. So if I show, like, a ratio of, you know, 10 to 2, that's attacker-defender. If it was 2 to 10, that'd still be attacker-defender. I always try to do the attacker first, and I'll be consistent. So for some reason, as I'm narrating, I don't do that. It, you won't be confused. You can follow along. All right, so it's 8 to 6. Oh, the attacker rolls a 2. And the defender comes out swinging with a 1. So that was good for us. So it's a 10 to 7, total of a 3. If it's uh, Remember, if it's greater than 0, but less than the loser's PR, the loser retreats 1 hex. So the 795th will have to... Retreat, let's go through the retreat priority, and I'm going to zoom out for that because this is part of the 709th Division, and the HQ for that is up here, I believe, somewhere right there. So that's always one of your priorities, and I'll go through the retreat priority. Uh, the new charts, I'll show you this. Uh, they have a great retreat priority list that it's foolproof. 
there it is right there, right? So you go through these steps right here, basically for retreat priority into a hex not adjacent to the enemy unit. So that would be uh, this one and this one, right? So I have two options. If there's more than one option, it's pretty simple. You just go down to the next one. Into a hex closer in hexes to the unit's HQ. So to me, that's got to be this one. It might actually be the same. I'm not 100% sure. We're going to find out because I, I would have checked and then I'm just going to click. Then you go into a hex containing covering terrain. So uh, hedgerow. This isn't bocage. Bocage is this darker right here. It looks the same, but it's a little darker. This is just hedgerow. So hedgerow with, with woods. Those are both covering terrain. Uh, so we're going to go that way because that's going to be a little bit closer to the uh, HQ and it's covering terrain. So we're going to we're going to make that call. So. Oh, maybe I didn't. Uh, you can't go into an overstack unless you have to. So 5832 we ended up going with. Yeah, so that was closer. Now I can advance if I want to. And I think you can, I can't advance the artillery because they don't have a, a uh, movement in the mode they're in. So I have to decide if I want to move that company. And I decide, nah, let's not do that. So now we want to try to shove around this 91st down here. So I'm going to walk through that. Uh, to try to make this a little more manageable and a little shorter, I'm only going to do two or three different combats. Then I'm just going to go through the information and kind of point out anything that sticks out. Otherwise, these videos, like just this phase, would be like an hour plus long to go through every step. And that just gets too long. So, okay. So I'm showing that this would be a 10 to 10 attack. So let's go ahead and look it up. So Germans have a lower PR. And so I'm thinking we want to risk this. Now, you can't look at a stack, but this is only one guy. So I can see his PR here is a 6. And he's sideways because he's not activated, and his defense is 7. So he's going to have a 7, plus half of that is 10. If I go in here and look at my guys, I got 3 attacking, and I have a PR of 5. So where did I get 10? Did I attack from the north? Hmm. Let's see. what it, Maybe I did it wrong. Let's go ahead and look. So let's see what I came up with. Okay, so that one's attacking that one. Germans get a plus 1 for the hedgerow. We're going to test our luck. Three to four. Now, how did I get ten for that? Two, four, one, two, three, and half of that, that would have been a seven. So maybe I did that one wrong. Oh, I must have fixed it. I ended up with 13 to 15. So two, well, anyway, so the Germans won, so it didn't, but so I had to retreat. Okay, but now he's active because I attacked him. All right, so let's go over here to the 6th Airborne. It's a huge stack. Now, remember, the rules say these guys just organize, so until they go to their movement phase, they don't have to move off there yet. These are all the gliders coming, flying in. And they're going to have to start moving off next turn. But for now, so all of our units are companies right now, so we can only attack with a total of three. That's the most you can attack with on the stack. Um, unless you're attaching units, but you can't attach companies to companies. So we got three units we can attack with. So, and we're going to, if we attack this guy right here, he's got a defense of one and a defense of two. So it's going to be a total of three. And then he should have a PR of five, I believe. Now I do have a guy here that's a two. So I think I used him if I remember right, but let's go ahead and do it up. So we're going to use the, uh, so the 22nd Pathfinders. Uh, A7P and B7P, so four strength points, and then nine divided by two is uh, rounded up to five, so I get nine attacking points. And then the uh, Germans, the uh, 1736 company, has a two for defense, plus one for woods, and a five divided by two for a total of six. Did I do that wrong too? Why, am, why is this different? Should have been more than that. Well, let's see what happens. So 9 to 6. That ends up being a 2 for the attacker and a 6 for the defender. So it's 11 to 12 for the defender. It actually would have been 11 to 13. So my guys have to retreat. Priority hex is northwest. 
because you can't retreat next to an enemy. So I'm attacking this way. So my retreat hexes would be this way, this way, or this way, away from him. I can't go here, obviously, because there's an enemy. I can't go here because it's next to an enemy. That leaves one open up. So we're going to run back there, which ain't the worst place to run to. But So, so far, we're starting out really good. And I did find out that I there was artillery there. So it didn't matter. It didn't change it. And remember, I tell you guys that, I mean, we want to do it right, right? You want to play the game the best you can. Sometimes when you're looking over stuff by yourself, you forget little things. But if you've watched my videos, I always try to go back and correct them or see if it would have changed it. And nine times out of ten, it doesn't change a thing. Because usually the, you know, the on the chart where it falls within the parameters, it just doesn't change it ever. So it's not the worst thing in the world. So don't let that discourage you from moving the pieces around and having a good time. And again, we're always trying to learn together here, right? So if you see me doing something wrong, just you know, be cordial about it and throw it in the comments and let me know. And I'll double check it, the rules, you know, trust but verify, and we'll figure it out. Because the whole point of these videos uh, isn't like, hey, look, I can play these games and blah, blah, blah. It's I want to learn these games. I don't play them 100% accurately. Very few people can because there's so many rules. Unless you're the designer, you're going to miss little things here and there. The goal is to get as close as you can. And if you can do it 100%, great. But don't let that discourage you from playing it. All right. Oh, this is one of those things. So in this module, for whatever reason, and it's not a complaint, this module's brilliant. Um, when you land on an enemy Windenstadt, or was it Weeder Stand in Nest? <laughs> and w, a WN. Um, you can't even see it's there. So I was like, oh, I. I landed on this during the glider segment and I didn't know it. So I'd have to fight that bad boy, right? So he activates and then we got to do an old comment. So we're going back to 41.2.3B. Uh, so we have to do a, okay, each German unit except for Winden, uh, WN and strong points, which this is a strong point because it has artillery, uh, must conduct a separate PR check. Uh, so we land on it. So. I guess I had to make a little bit of an assumption here. If you land on a WN, you have to retreat. And for gliders, if you're an anti-tank or artery, artillery, you're dead. Uh, but this is not, so it's infantry. So I'm going to retreat him to the south. Because you have to make a, a check. And if you can't make a check, then these guys have to run away. So, so that's what I did for that. Okay, and there's no other airborne attacks that I'm thinking I'd want to do. So we're going to jump right into some German movement. And we're going to see how the Germans can consolidate. So you can see where I, I moved some Germans and the screen jumped over. And uh, I like to use the little uh, the pointer. So let's go ahead and see. Uh, German units that were attacked in any manner are automatically activated. This includes those units that retreated due to a PR after an ally unit landed on them. German units that begin the segment adjacent to an allied unit including fog of war units or were activated as above may move up to two hexes all right so i'm going to activate all those uh and i did ask a question on the forums on the wn strong point if they're active or not because i have them all turned sideways but i could have swore way back then now i did get my answer that they're all active but when i was playing this i could not find the rule where it says they're active and I could have swore that I read or somebody uh, somebody had a video saying that they're considered active. So they don't roll to activate, so by definition they're active, so they will flip over uh, to active later on. Okay, so I'm, I'm twisting all these guys that are next to Airborne. That's going to activate some dudes. Get some dudes down here activated. Okay. Okay, then after that, we have more activations. We can roll for some units to activate. Now, this is one of my favorite parts of the game. It's kind of like Walk Dem Ryan. When you're doing the Battle of the Bulge, and American units are starting to pour in on the sides of the map, and units are activating after they've been ambushed. This is really similar, right? So this is similar that um, you you got to roll to see, like, these guys are sideways, so they're not active, but who's going to activate? I, I just love that kind of stuff because it gives replayability because you don't know how that's going to go next time. So any adjacent units can move to. 
if units enter a marsh uh, or forest hex or cross any kind of stream or river and doesn't go through a road or bridge hex side, it has to stop movement, so you get one movement hex. German units may attempt to enter hex containing an allied fog of war unit. If there are any types of allied unit, the German... So basically, if they're all fog of war units, you can try to move through them because this represents these little groups of squads. And if it's an actual regroup battalion, uh, then you can't. Uh, anyway, you have to make a PR check. All right, so we're looking at this guy here. And I want to try to clear this, this road or this bridge out of here because I want this bridge open up for my armor and stuff to try to come up here. So the 91st Fusiliers are going to move. So I rolled, I got a 7, and equal to or greater is a fail. So that didn't work. Okay. If the unit fails the PR check, it must halt its current hex and move no further than that segment. I'm going to try the Pioneers. They get a 7 as well. So looks like the Parachute Infantry put up a pretty good little fight. They do have a leader there. Okay, we got this guy. I don't know. So in here, and I try to put some of my thoughts and ideas at the time because when I come back, it's been a while. I know as the Germans, I want to try to protect Carantan down here. Um, if these guys hadn't regrouped so much, and remember, you can't hover over and look at a stack. I probably would have attacked, but I know that there's three guys there, and they're probably all twos on defense, so it's going to be a one-to-one -one attack with some terrain benefiting them. So in that case, I decided, eh. But we got this one right here. We're going to try to consolidate, so we push these two guys together so that they can uh, help each other out. And I'm just switching the unit there. All right. And over here, we might have potential for attacking. So I'm looking over here. We got two. So we'll consider that. A, a fog of war may not observe for fire support missions. So we can move right past them. We don't have to worry about movement halts. And so we're just going to kind of go over there. and we can attack northwest or southeast later if we choose. So I put these guys in the middle, and I'll either go this way or that way, depending on the situation when I'm done moving here. I'm going to move some engineers down there. They can only move two. <laughs> All right, we're going to stay there and protect the artillery there. German units begin the segment within two hexes of an allied unit. One intervening hex may move one hex. So we got this guy down here. We got a guy up north there. We got the tanks activate because of this guy. And we activated, I think, this dude right here. Oh, nope, it's the guy in here in the ET. Because he's within two. Okay, and then the guy up just a bit, a bit north of him. Okay, so this guy is going to move. We're going to move that guy. I was trying to figure out how to put this guy inside the strong point, but they don't, I, you know, in the future, in the past, I could hit like select and move them, but this doesn't let me do that, so... Let's undo that real quick. I moved this guy by accident. But yeah, so I was trying to figure out how to put him under there. So I couldn't do it, so I just put him on top. Again, I don't really like how they get buried, so you forget that they're there. So you have to check under these a little bit. Again, not being critical of the design. Uh, trying to remember the guy's name. Is it Ward? Last name? Well, I could tell you. I'll look it up later, but... Um, does a great job designing these, and I think it's Michael Ward. So forgive me if I'm wrong there. Okay, so. All right, so additional German units. 21st Panzer Division, the German player rolls 1d10. Have the result in round up. The number of 10 is the number of 21st Panzer Division units that activate. 21st Panzer Division units west of the Orne River can only be activated if there are allied units west of the Orne River. 
There is not any allied units west of the Arn River. He's right on it. So I'll only be able to activate these guys down here, but we are excited about that. And I'm going to go ahead and roll and I get a one. And I remembered that because it was like, really? So I get to activate one guy. <laughs> so I activated this guy down here and he's kind of beat up already. So he's, he's actually a one step unit right now, but he's the closest. So we're going to get him over there to cause a problem. So, and I kind of messed that up because it said they could move one or no, that was if they started out within two, these did not have a restriction. 91st and the 709th divisions, any six units assigned to the 91st or 709th that are within six X's of a U.S. unit may activate. So now we're going to activate those. All right, so I'm going to, I started using this little pointer again because I realized that, you know, it makes it a little bit harder. So I started placing these because I wanted to kind of see what options I had because I have more guys that I can activate than than I am allowed. So I want to kind of see what all my options are, right? Because then what I can do is zoom out here and I can kind of get an overall tactical view of the map. And uh, I can kind of see, okay, these are all my spade hexes. So these are all my guys that I can activate. What do I want to activate? So I'm doing the 91st first. So let's zoom back out to here. So in here, I said I want to do as many full battalions as I can. Might not necessarily be the closest guy, but I want to get these full battalions up there to start fighting. So there was one, two, and three. I'll get rid of those. And then I went with that guy, some Falschumager. Those six Falschumager guys aren't too bad as a 7 PR for attacking and an 8 for defense. And they're pretty good size, right? 7, 8, 6 with three steps. So I want to get as many of those guys. And then I thought uh, Carantan was very impo uh, important to want to try to to defend. And I said, I got two less, so two left. So there's a toss up. There's some nice artillery down south. And then there's the HQ in the west. I got this HQ. Uh, the artillery is right here. So do I want to activate them or do I want to get this HQ activated? There's some small set, uh, battalions of the 709th, and I think that was a combined six. So I predominantly went with the 91st because they were the strongest. So I ended up going with the artillery. And I got one more. So I'm kind of thinking about these guys here. I think I did the engineers. Oh, I did this guy right here, I think. So activated units may move up to their full printed movement allowance. However, when you enter a hex that's within three hexes of an allied unit, you multiply all movement costs by two. So basically what, what I think that's representing is they don't know where all the, out, the uh, paratroopers are, and they're running into little pockets of paratroopers at the same time that they're fighting their way. It wouldn't be anything that would cause damage to them because they're bigger units, but it's going to slow up their ability to just move freely. So I think that does a good job. So I'm just going to move these around. We're going to kind of move through that a little quicker. Uh, these guys are moving up from the south, trying to get into position. These guys are heading towards Carantan in the southern sector there. You do get road movement bonus. Remember, if you're infantry on a road and you stay on a road the whole time with six movement points, you get two bonus movement points. Didn't say anything about not getting that, so I did give it to them when they stayed on the road. And this Falschumager unit, uh, he decides that he's going to go up here and help protect, uh, what is that, the 3rd Battalion of the 1058th, the 1058th. All right, so next time we will cover the 41.7.0 sec segment, uh, which is the first German combat. Also the 29919, not sure if they can move southwest because of activated units or what am I talking about here, Steve? Why didn't you point at it? Uh, activated units must ask to move. Oh, so let's see. Uh, I must have moved some airborne and you can't move away from uh, drop zones. You have to continue to move towards them. So I wonder if I did something wrong there. We'll see. Uh, Usually I'll auto-correct it. Uh, we're going to move these guys down. Oh, yeah, this guy right here. Uh, the rule says that 
you have to move towards airborne units when you're moving these guys. And I had moved him away to get into a better defense or something. So he continued to move towards the airborne. You can't just use them to start running back and build up a big defensive line. You actually have to engage the paratroopers. So there's a little less uh, freedom there because, you know, we have the God's eye view of everything going on. And this makes it so you have to do some stuff. All right, yeah, because I wanted to have the small river for fighting, but I couldn't do that. I had to keep moving, so. All right, I don't see any attacks that I want to do around the 82nd and the 100, 101st, but I think we're going to see some at the 6th Airborne that we want to do. So we're going to do this one right here. So it's just going to be the one. The Germans have nine versus the four for the fog of war unit. And it's nine to four. So attacker is a seven and the defender is a five. So that should be 16 to nine. That equals seven. So that is an eliminated unit. And we get to flip it over. Well, I probably shouldn't have flipped it over because you're not supposed to look. But it was an actual unit. So that was a big bummer. And... They capture drop zone K, which is not great because that's uh, that's one of my uh, I can use drop zones for supply sources. Yeah. So anyway, and then we do have one over here that I'm looking at. I want to do possibly. I changed my mind that it wasn't maybe just one. It's a five to four, which isn't great, but you know it's there's always a chance, right? And this. This is probably the best chance this guy has against if this is a real airborne unit to knock it out now. So I and then I said, oh wait, five to five. So it ends up being five to five because they get plus one for the woods. So it's an eleven to eight. So that means that the loser retreats. So you can retreat toward the enemy if you have to. No, I couldn't retreat. No matter where I retreated to. Mm, not 100% sure of that. I might have to have went that way. Did I fix it? I guess not. Okay, ask, uh, back to the west to double check that fog war units of four for a single. Mm, okay, so let's go ahead and take... We I want to go back here and double look at some of these battles. So here I got this armor here. Armored fighting being double their combat strength, both attack and defense. So he, he ends up being a two. Uh, oh, no, nope, it's as if he's only attacked with infantry. And the stack is located in clear terrain, uh, not including locations or villages. So I said, okay, well, that's kind of a bummer, but it's still a five to five. We go look up here. So I can't look at the stack. I'm pretty sure those are all Fog of War units, but they're going to get to use those Fog of War units. Uh, so they all have a defensive, I think it was one, plus they get half their PR plus a leader. And uh, I changed my mind. I go back over here and take a look. That's a six to four. So now it's a 14 to 13 uh, and basically make them retreat. So they'll retreat, and we're not going to advance, but we were just taking our chances and hoping to shove around some airborne. Be basically, think of this as the airborne are all running around in little groups, and you're trying to knock them out before they can regroup and consolidate into their units. Okay, that's it for reals. Uh, next time we come back, we will do the second Allied movement. I'm doing a little bit of counter cleaning here, it looks like. And that's it. So looks like I did a couple minor things wrong. I have to go back and fix those up. Um, make sure that they don't affect anything else. Oops, some little counting errors and stuff like that. But that's about it. Uh, we come back. Like I said, I've, I've really been getting sucked into playing. I'm actually on the 6 p.m. turn. And I don't want to give away any spoilers about what beaches are open or not open. And who's pushing out onto the main map. But... I just find that really fascinating how this game does it, and I really enjoy it. So thanks for watching. Trying to keep them a little shorter. So got any questions or thoughts, make sure you put them on below. If you want to support the channel, you can click on the Amazon affiliate link. Even if you don't buy gaming stuff, if you buy a pen or a, a, you know, a laptop or a blanket or something, we get a small portion of that for the channel. It doesn't cost you any more. Amazon gives us part of the fee they collect from the seller. And um, 
So if you want to support the channel that way, or there'll be a link in the down below that'll go directly to the game on the Little Big Wars website, uh, and also to the Amazon item if you want to buy it on Amazon. So thanks for watching, and we will talk to you soon.